now I will list the items you will be using today. This is the power supply, followed by the electrophoresis chamber. Next we have two gel beds, and below that the gel combs, followed by the electrophoresis buffer, the agarose powder, microcentrifuge tubes, and flash blue, which is carcinogenic, so be sure to wear gloves. Oh, oh, we didn't see you there. Well, uh, well, we might as well tell about the electrophoresis lab. I might as well include a meme on it. All right, welcome to Maryville College Lab. Today we'll be doing the electrophoresis lab. Now to do this, we're going to start by mixing our agarose gel. Now to do that, first we're going to need to mix 0.23 grams of agarose powder with our accurately measured out 30 milliliters of electrophoresis buffer. Then we're going to swirl the mixture to get any clumps out before taking it to the microwave. It's also important to use this shape of flask in order to minimize evaporation. While the agarose gel is cooling, you're going to want to get the gel bed and tape the sides and make sure that you create a nice seal here to prevent any gel from leaking out. Now in order to do that, you're just going to want to get the tape carefully put it on the sides. Make sure it's nice and tight, and you have a nice little bed there to put your agarose gel. Okay, before completely adding the agarose gel, you're just going to want to pipette a small amount out and seal these edges right here with the liquid. Be careful with that, and then once that dries, you'll really know that it's sealed, and then you'll be ready to add the rest of your agarose gel. Okay, once the agarose gel is done warming in the microwave, we're going to let it sit out till it's cold enough for us to handle. Now, we've got it cold enough for me to handle, obviously, so before we add it, I'm going to show you that we have our comb here. What we're going to do with this comb is load it where the black band appears, and what this is going to do is help create our loading wells for our dye whenever we add the agarose gel. So, now that we've got it securely in place, it is time to add the agarose gel. Sure, we get it uniform throughout. Make sure it touches our corners here. All right, and what we're going to do is let this sit for 30 minutes until it solidifies and turns into our solid agarose gel. Okay, so after the gel has solidified in the gel bed, the next step will be to remove the comb, which will create your wells. Now you're going to do this very carefully with two hands. Make sure you do it very evenly. And here we have our wells. Now that we've removed the comb and we have our wells, it's time to load into the electrophoresis chamber. Now to do this, you're obviously going to first want to remove the tape. Now before loading into the electrophoresis chamber, it's important to check which plates you have. There's two different sizes. We have a thick based one and a small based well bed. The thick based one will go in first. Tyler's going to show you how to actually load it. All right. Set this down first. Be sure that whenever you're taking the lid off of the chamber, you don't want to lift directly up because these two right here studs, it will, you'll break the chamber. So what you're going to want to do is slowly slot, slot the lid of the chamber back, place the lid down. All right, now your currents are going to be labeled with um, the negative being black and the positive being red. You're always going to want it to correlate with what you see here. There are uh, stickers that are bl a black sticker and a red sticker to help match up. Now, naturally you're going to want to grasp this like so, but what you're going to need to do when you're setting it down is actually grasp it from front to back like this so they slide into the notches evenly. Now your next step is going to be to load your buffer onto your bed. Okay, so we have our buffer now and we are ready to load it into the chamber. Make sure the lid's down, keeping with the stereo technique. And we're just slowly and carefully going to add our buffer until it reaches the top notch of this gel bed. Making sure it covers the actual agarose gel as well. Okay, now we've reached it to the very top of our actual bed. 
And the next step that we are going to show you how to do is to actually load your sample. Okay, we have now reached a point to where we're actually ready to load the wells on the first bed. First, of course, we need to get our micro pipette tip. And our micro pipette needs to be the 20 to 200 microliter pipette because the uh, aliquots that we're going to be loading are 35 microliters. So let's get our sample here, extract our 35 microliters very carefully. Okay, now we're ready to prepare ourselves to get ready to load the wells. Now, you're going to want to make sure that whatever hand that you're most prominent with, that you have obviously your micro pipette in, and with your other hand you want to securely hold your wrist, and this is going to make sure that your pipette tip isn't flailing around because these wells are obviously very close apart and it's very important in order to get an accurate reading on your sample. Okay, now that I have my wrist firmly grasped, it is time to load our wells. Be sure you select your correct well and be sure to remember it throughout the experiment because it can get confusing with plenty of wells throughout your classmates and not knowing what your sample is. So be sure you know exactly which one you're going in. And I'm just going to slowly hold the tip of the pipette over the well. Be very careful. This is the most important part of the entire experiment. and our well's loaded. Now for those of you who got the small base well, you're going to go second, and your bed will fit right on top of the other one. Now grasping it, as Tyler showed you earlier, you're going to place it right on top, making sure to color coordinate the red and the black. It'll fit right on top, thus so. Now you're going to need to add more electrophoresis buffer, and covering it in the same manner as the first time. Okay, now that we've added the buffer, it's time to once again load our samples. We're going to do this in the same manner using a clean pipette tip, of course. Get the proper aliquot amount of liquid. Our sample. Carefully, going right over the well, being careful not to actually make contact with it. And there you have it. Okay, now we have our samples loaded. The only thing left to do is actually the lid on and connect it to our power source. So, lid goes on similar to the way that it came off. Put in the actual current, the negative side and the positive side, making sure they correlate with one another once again. Put it on. Now, with the other end of these, you're also going to want to connect it. You're going to see on the power source that it's going to have the positive outlet and the black negative outlet. So, put the red one in the red positive and the black in the negative. And switch on. Okay, so we have the current flowing from a negative tar charge to a positive charge. Now, DNA is negatively charged, so in order to get the DNA to actually run down the well to where we can get an accurate reading, we're going to need it to go down to the positive charge. And that's exactly what you're about to see here, is the DNA going from the negative to the positive charge. As the electrophoresis is running, this is what the band should appear to be moving along down from the negative current to the positive. Okay. Now that we have done running it through the actual power source, we got our bands out now. It is time to disperse the gel onto these wave bulbs. So let me show you. An easy way is just to kind of find the edge and then push it on down. Make sure to be careful. Okay, now it is the time to apply our 
flash stain. And the purple ends of these are carcinogenic, so you always want to be, wear gloves and be extremely careful with this. You want the purple side to be down to actually pick up the stain from your sample. Lay it on there. Provide some kind of weight, of course, to help press it on there evenly. And do the same for your other sample. So the final step of our electrophoresis lab is to now rinse off our gels. Now to do this, we first have to remove the carcinogenic stain, which we want to do very carefully. Put it here for now, which will be later correctly disposed of. And now we're going to pour distilled water into the Weibo. Just shimmy it around. We gotta do this for about 20 minutes before we can see what our stains look like. Your finished product should have bands similar to those you see here. And now we've completed the electrophoresis lab.